and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome back to my first European road trip. Well, in over a year, myself, Paul Wallace from Supercars London and Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales are headed to Monaco. Now, so far the trip's been amazing, but yesterday was a total washout. Actually, this morning started as a total washout. It's just been really crap weather, which I guess was always the risk with doing a road trip in October. But this has kind of been the first time that we've been able to all hit the road together since COVID began. So we were like, it's worth the risk. And actually, the skies are now clearing up. And today should be incredible because the weather is supposed to be very good once these clouds have blown through and we're heading to roads we know very well and they're very good roads so i thought today i would compare the three cars we've decided to bring on this trip because really they're three very different sports cars all kind of under 100 grand we're going to discuss it more but for now we're going to get out of chambry i think that's where we are chambry uh, and hit the road to find, yeah, hopefully some dry and incredible time. This is uh, the wrong label. They've put the wrong labels on all of the nozzles. It's really weird. So that, that should that should be V-Pass. That, well, that is V-Pass. This is, yeah, this is the 100 yeah, you stuff. Wouldn't, you wouldn't put e, e, Well, the government e say to put E10 in, so I'm just what I'm doing because of the government. Should we get this for, for Paul? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it like that. A gift, a gift for you. <laughs> This, this is why we come to Europe for road trips. As much as I love the UK, I'm sorry, you do not get roads like this, you do not get scenery like this, and you don't often get weather like this. All of the rain on the way down here has been worth it for today. We are absolutely loving life. The roads are relatively busy, but we're just doing our own thing. I've got the roof down, I'm taking in all the views and the soundtracks, and oh my God, too much excitement, honestly. This is brilliant. We've just pulled over here for a short stop whilst Paul does some drinks drone shots and yeah even it just even smells good it smells good it is moments like this where this car just makes so much sense now, I've been a little bit negative about this F-Type in recent videos, and I don't think it's very fair. It wasn't made to be a canyon carver or a mountain road destroyer. It's a GT car, like I said earlier in this video, and that's what it does best, and it still does so well and better than it's ever done before. It is more dynamic. Okay, fine. It's not like a Porsche GT product, not a GT car, but a GT product, or a Ferrari 458, or even my 360, but it's a different thing entirely. And out here, with this roof down, on a road like this, I'm taking in every single moment. There's snow up there, there's snow! Oh, I need to get a shot of the snow. Look at this. Oh my God. Where are we? This is just incredible. Incredible, and then look. I've got V8 noise. Okay, not as much noise as before, but it's still there reminding me that I'm in something special and sporty. And every now and again, it pops and burbles and cracks. When I need it to be fast, it is, but I just, I'm sorry, I gotta stop again. What are these views? I'm getting out to take a photo. Outrageous. Well, this road continues just to be very interesting. I've come around the corner and found a construction truck just in the middle of the road, not really sure what it's doing, but 
not exactly a bad spot to get stuck. Outrageous. But yeah, I think they're clearing up some debris or unloading some rocks or doing something anyway. So I guess we have to wait a bit of time and then this will all get clear and we can crack on. But yeah, for now, look at these views. Neither Paul or I have a clue where Tony is. Let's see. Um, Tony, come in, Tony. That's still nothing. Uh, Paul, the truck's moving. I, I think it'll be another couple of minutes, but the truck is moving. God knows how high up we are. Honestly, this is turning into another planet. We are climbing and climbing and climbing and I didn't think this day could get any better but every corner I go around it gets better! We, we still haven't seen Tony yet. I think Tony's in Monaco already. Hello! <laughs> Hello! How long have you been here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you have a nice time? Paul's still rolling down the hill in neutral. Why? He's run out of fuel. You are joking. There's a petrol station here, isn't there? Right here. Perfect. See you in a second. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Aren't you? I just put some in. I was going to say, he must have burnt it up getting down here so quick. Bloody hell. Oh, he's made it. I bet he was flapping. He was flapping. He, he was, flapping. was flapping. He's like, oh, there's a BP 7 miles away. I wonder if I can make it. <laughs> I genuinely think this car has come into its own today, but as I promised at the start of the video, I wanted to compare these three because they're basically all a hundred grand sports cars. So, are you just eating sweets now? What are you guys no. doing? No, I give Paul a challenge of trying to open a sweet that's cooked in my Because it's melted from, uh, yeah. from the speed of your driving. No, it's not that, it's the hotness. So, go on then. Give me best thing and worst thing about this car. Um, Best thing, brakes and tyres. Bit, bit slow on a straight line, but who cares for today, what we're doing today. I found a couple of niggy bits. Go on. I'm, I am being really critical. Like, if you're comparing it to a GT3 or a GT3 RS, because it is a GT car, but it is the softer version. It just doesn't turn as quick, and the gearbox doesn't feel like as, you know, like the others, they go bang, 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 and GT3s and that. This is just a little bit slow and it feels like, you know the manual car but it's got really long gears? Yeah. This still feels like it's still got, got long, long gears. Yeah. Do you realise you still have to sell this car? No, 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 <laughs> but for, for, the, for the money you, ain't, you won't get a He's given car. great advice actually. He's giving, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's giving... a perfect consumer advice for anyone that wants to buy a PDK GT4. <laughs> but hold on a sec, so just remind us because we're comparing these three now. So we're, how much, you, how much is this car? Uh, 99 grand list. 99 grand list? Yeah. Horsepower? 420. 420, PDK, rear wheel drive, yeah. mid engine. Yeah. Anything else that we think we should put in the top trumps? It's listing? the best car here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get ahead of ourselves, he's trying to shake your hand. <laughs> Nor to 60 ton? Uh, four, four and a half, and a half sorry, something, something like that, okay. yeah. Right, so then let's move on. Paul, Do we have to? please come, yeah, come, please Paul. come to your car. <laughs> best and worst things about the GTR. Um, straight line speed, sound, and the comfort of the seat. Worst things? Perfect for motorways. Uh, fuel economy, battery capacity. You, wait, you say fuel economy, you haven't done that badly. We've been it's identical. Low, it's, it's low 20s. Low 20s, and you're doing what per tank? So two, 300 miles? Yeah. But the worst thing on these roads is the ability for it to like hill climb and be dynamic because the steering, I had it told to me by someone just after I bought it who had driven it properly hard, saying that the steering's numb. And I was like, well, I don't find that on the M25. What, you would It is <laughs> shocking. Okay. Yeah. Like, terrifying to the point where I've got no confidence to carry any speed through the corners. Yeah. It's so heavy, or it feels heavy and big. So I'm coming down into the corner fast, because it's fast in a straight line, mm -hmm. and I'm anchoring on the brakes, and I just don't feel like the brakes are powerful enough to stop me. But then I'm like, well, if I back off, 
then I don't have the steering to go around the corner. So the entire time, I'm just in complete panic mode in this. And I'm not the, <laughs> look, I'm not the best driver out of us three, but I've driven these roads in other cars, and it's by far the worst car I've ever driven. And in. don't do yourself a disservice, you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So remind us of our top trumps then. We're all wheel drive. All wheel drive, six gears, which is useless on the motorway, which is probably why the fuel economy is so bad. Okay. Oh! 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 That is actually really quite cool. Oh! oh! <laughs> He was showing off. I nearly had a head on with him because I couldn't turn around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> He's come back to find you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> horsepower. Standard it's 560. Five. But I 565? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I heard from the previous owner that it's got a Litchfield stage one. Okay. Now, I have no idea what that means in terms of numbers. Well let's you, say we're pushing up towards six hundred. No, right? no, 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 it's not six hundred. It's not yeah, 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 it's completely useless. Okay. Okay, so we don't really know the horsepower, but let's. We're talking about comparing these three. 580. 580. About 580. Nor to 60 sub three seconds? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All wheel drive. Yeah. Um, I think that was all we were comparing, right? Whilst obviously the. Bi oh, actually, we should talk about weight. What's the weight of your car? Uh, all uh, 1400 kilos. Okay, because that is the. Because. I'm the heaviest. We you had are. this conversation yeah. over Walkie Talkie earlier. Nearly 1,900 kilos now because it's heavy. the convertible. Oh, I thought you meant amongst us. <laughs> <laughs> like Lockdown weight gain has killed us. <laughs> no, you will be. <laughs> Probably, yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the muscle. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm the heaviest. But I have to say, this car has really come into its own today. I was being a tiny bit negative yesterday and I was a bit nervous ahead of this trip that it might feel a bit numb or floaty based on reasonable or recent experience but actually this is at its best when I'm doing my own thing when I'm not trying to chase you <laughs> when I'm trying to chase you I'm like oh but when I'm doing my own thing it's so good and with the roof down today and these views yeah I mean honestly I'm so jealous because the visibility in this out the front is okay but any other I want to look at the mountains I want to look at everything that's going on around but I just if it's a GT car, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> so, uh, 575 horsepower, uh, all-wheel drive, 8-speed ZF, 99 grand retail. So it's over... That's this is the steep. most expensive car, the heaviest and the most expensive car here. That's steep. But like the most luxurious as well, yes. by the way. That so is I, true. This is the thing. So, okay, I'm just going to declare it. I personally think the F-Type is the winner. It's the best car here. Because for this trip, apart from a couple of moments when I've been chasing you going, oh God, I, I, it could be more dynamic. Actually, it's done everything perfectly except practicality. Really? What, what Boot space is awful. Right, and so the so viewers would have seen that. Well, well, so do I, because I've got two boots. And at no point down the motorway have I thought, oh, I'd rather be in your two cars. So I'm the winner. And at a couple of points, I have thought I would be in your car. Yeah. Oh. I would I would happily rather be in any of the cars. So, <laughs> unfortunately what we have worked out is the GTR has lost, even though it's the bargain of the bunch. Yeah. Here's what we said the other day at dinner. In 2009 when it came out, that was when it was amazing. Ama yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. The problem is, it was game changing back then, but now everything's caught up and gone so far past it. Yeah, yeah. That it's great value for money. If you want- A, a used car. Great, but not in, new. Because no. it's 86 grand plus, plus, plus. Correct. In the UK, I'm, I'm so happy with it. I'm like, I daily it, it's cool, it does everything, ticks every box that I need it to. Um, but just out here, as you can tell, I'm, I'm just not enjoying it. But we now have the ultimate test for any sports car coming to this part of Europe. Red Rock Road. Official name, Georges Jean 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 Jean. I can't remember. Gorge. Gorge de, de Mel or something. something like that. So we're going that way. Tony, you go first, because I don't care if I can't keep up with you. Paul. Maybe we'll wait five minutes before let him get a little you bit go further. First. We'll wait ten minutes and we'll come. <laughs> He's not going to be slower than that truck. He'll gap me up the hill, that. No. <laughs>
perfect day. Honestly, I think the day that we've all dreamed of for so long. And as I've said now quite a few times, this car really came into its own. I still have such a love, such an affinity for the F-Type. Anyway, it is now time to finally make the final part of this journey to Monaco. So yes, content over the next few weeks is gonna be coming from Monaco, but also a few other places. We do have plans to continue road tripping. We're at least gonna base ourselves down in one of our favorite cities. And considering some of the Instagram posts I've seen from there recently, I think it's gonna be quite hectic. So anyway, if you've enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know which of the three you would pick for this journey.